hi guys welcome back again to my youtube channel so in this quick video we are going to be making this flounce puff ruffle sleeve so if this is something you're interested in keep on watching and let's get started so guys this is the fabric we are going to be using to make this sleeve what i have here is two yards of fabric and i'm going to be using this whole two yards for just the ruffle of one sleeve you're also going to need crinoline to make the flounce stand so these are the two materials you basically need to be able to make this sleeve so let's just go ahead and open up this fabric like i said before i have two yards of fabric here you need to have a lot like this two yards is just for the flounce area of one sleeve like i said before so that means for the two sleeves you will need four yards okay so now i'm folding this fabric into two equal halves as you see me doing like this so go ahead and fold your fabric into two equal halves and once you're through with this we are going to get the middle of this fold so now guys we're going to get the center of this fabric as is in the fold so from this end here i'm going to measure all the way to the other end and whatever i get i'm just going to get the middle of it so the midpoint for this line here is somewhere around here 23 and a half so i'm going to go ahead and mark it here this is for the longer part now for the other side i am going to i have 31 so half of that is 15 and a half so this second point here is our center okay so now once you've gotten your center from this center point you're going to create a circle so this is going to be the point where our circle is starting from so i'm placing my tape here and i'm marking two inches away so i'm marking a two inch i'm using two inches as the radius this is like something everybody can use so using two inches as your radius just go ahead and create your first circle so guys once you've drawn out your circle now we want to determine the length of the flounce i am going to be using a two inches crinoline here okay so now i want to measure four inches so from the circle i have here i came out by four inches so that i will have enough room for my crinoline and also enough stitching allowances to stitch this down so from the circle i had before i came out by four inches you saw how i did it i came out by four inches and now i'm using these four inches to just continue to draw circles around so i'm going to do this all the way around until i get to the end of this fabric and there is no more room for me to continue with this process okay so if you're using the two inches crinoline like i'm doing here uh, make sure to use at least four inches for your flounce length now if you're using the shorter crinoline i would advise that you make your flounce length about three inches because that other crinoline is about one inch wide okay so guys as you can see i'm still using my four inches to mark all the way around and once i get to the end and i'm not able to get four inches again i decided to stop so after getting that point now i'm just going ahead to cut all the way around the lines that i have right here just watch what i'm doing it's very simple so i've cut off the excess first of all first of all take away the excess and now i'm going to start cutting out the round flounce all the way around it's actually very beautiful to see guys so just continue to cut it all the way around just like you see me doing like this so my loves i'm done cutting it out as you can see this was folded into two because one part is going to be serving as the lining and the other part will serve as the front of the fabric so you must use the same fabric actually only if you want to have a kind of design that use different um, different fabrics for the lining and the actual fabric so now as you can see we have two pieces here I am going to head over to the sewing machine and start stitching these two pieces down. I am going to be placing my crinoline I size so along. So I'll start sewing from here, place my crinoline from this point and start sewing around. So let me just make this area here a little bit curvy because it has to have a nice curve. It's supposed to be like a circle. So I'll stitch from here down. Then from this area, I'll place my crinoline and sew all the way around so now we're on the sewing machine as you can see i have started stitching it down i stitched the curve part and then now i've added the crinoline so as i'm stitching the two pieces together i'm also stitching the crinoline along so make sure you are not like stretching the crinoline as you do this so just go ahead and continue stitching until you get all the way to the other end but i hope that you are well i hope your mark is 
so guys this is stitched down now as you can see i've stitched it all the way to the other end and what i want to do now is to make a top stitch so because i'm using the same fabric for both lining and actual piece here i'll just pick one side and push the stitching allowance towards towards it and just make a top stitch if you were using the lining you push the stitching allowance towards the lining like we always do this is not the easiest top stitch you will ever do in your life this is not easy because of the curves that comes with the flare so as you can see i'm pushing the stitching allowance towards the area where i had my um crino line which is actually serving as the lining part so i'm just going to continue doing this again all the way to the end of this fabric guys like i said before this is not as easy as it looks because of the curves that comes with the flare so you have to be very patient with it as you are pushing this um stitching allowance towards the lining part okay so as you're making this top stitch like i said this is not going to be easy it's not as easy as it's looking right now so you have to be patient with it so guys i am done making my top stitch i hope you can see here so um this is what it looks like i pushed everything towards the part i am using as the lining and this is what i have so like i said before this is not going to be the easiest top stitch you will make it's going to stress you a little bit so now i'm going to go ahead and iron out this piece you will need to iron it out for it to be easy for you to stitch on the sleeve so let's go ahead and iron it out Make you rest up on me You know I got you Now maybe you're friending me The money done Joe so guys i am done ironing out everything as you can see here you can see how neat it looks so another thing i went ahead to do was to secure the upper part with my overlocking with the overlocking stitch on my sewing machine so that because this area is not going to be inside it's going to actually be outside you don't want it to start fraying while the customer is wearing it so i use the overlocking machine which a lot of you guys know as weaving to go about that area so now this is my basic sleeve as you can see this is where we are going to be placing the ruffle of course so now i'm going to take a measurement from the top of my sleeve here down to my elbow so from my top of sleeve to elbow i have 12 inches so i marked it here now i'm going to get the midpoint between this place and this 12 inches which is six the midpoint is right here so on this midpoint to get the middle is actually easy because i already have my gate all line so to get the middle here is very easy just mark on the gate all line that divides the sleeve into two so this is the center of my sleeve here so i'm just going to start making a i don't know if what to call this like a spiral circles just what you see me doing like this so it's about three quarter of an inch i'm using about three quarter of an inch to make this circle all the way around from the point that i started from so you need to do this this is going to be the line where you're going to be placing the ruffles around you're going to be stitching on this line now you might not be able to follow this line <laughs> exactly when you're on the sewing machine because it's it's really not as easy as it looks but you need the line to just serve as a guide so go ahead and just draw this line across and make sure to leave about half inch away because you need to be able to stitch this to the sleeve okay so i'm just going to continue to do this all the way around and i will stop it here so now i'll go ahead and place the curved part of my ruffle on the middle here and i am going to head over to the sewing machine and start stitching this try as much as possible to follow the lines i have all the way around so when i'm stitching this i'm going to make tiny um pleats as i go around so that it will make it more ruffle so let's go ahead and do that so guys this is me stitching it all the way around so like i said before um you need to make tiny pleats as you sew it around this is going to make the ruffles a little bit more fuller okay so just go ahead and continue try as much as possible to follow the line if you're not able to follow the line it's fine just make sure they are close to each other make Sure they are close because if they are far it's not going to have a good ruffle so guys this is the final look of my flounce ruffle sleeve as you can see it has not been added to the dress because this is just a tutorial i don't intend to add this to any dress actually and you can see here at the top i have some space because we need space to be able to attach this to the dress you don't want the ruffle to get all the way to the top okay so you need space at the top to be able to uh, attach it to the dress and also you will need some space on the side for you to be able to stitch down the side 
so this is basically all for the making of this tutorial this is how to go about this sleeve i would advise that if you're making this make sure your client has enough fabric you need at least six yards of fabric for you to be able to make like a simple dress with this sleeve you need a lot of fabric and also make sure to charge well because this is very very time consuming okay so thank you so much for watching guys i will see you guys in my next video bye